Why I love หลวงปู่หลวงปู่ชาสุปัตโทวัดน้องปะพงนะวัดน้องปะพง He didn't mince his words. He was not known to mince his words. And why I love him? That's one of the many reasons why I love him so much. But I suppose I didn't even know him because he passed away before I ever made it to Wat Nong Pa p o n g So that's not why I love him because I knew him. But I I feel I know him because I know his teachings, and his teachings are those of the Buddha, and they were not always happy, smiling teachings like. The laughing, these this jolly plump Chinese Buddha statue. We see the laughing Buddha. Many people expect a monk to always be uh, laughing and smiling and being generous and just kind in a human manner, human kindness, which he had plenty of, of course, if you investigate into his life. But he didn't mince his words, and when it was time to tell somebody they were jumping the gun, or they were on the wrong path, or to warn them, or to um, explain something, he was very direct in his explanations. He he didn't mince his words. He said, "Put tong tong, put tong mag." Uh, speak very directly, which is something I like to do myself, and uh, but. Course, not being an a r a h a n t or not being a, a great practitioner like l u m p u was, or, or having a name for it, which also helps. Uh, most people find it offensive being very direct because social etiquette and taboo doesn't really permit you to say, "Hey, why are you fat?" Or, I don't say that, but actually, people who live in Thailand, foreigners who come to live in Thailand with Thai families. Will notice that there is no neither shame nor sh- shame in asking or shame in answering, and there is no shame in being fat or thin, or a lady boy, and uh, these are not. Or why is your why have is your finger missing? In England, that would be oh don't look at that person's finger. He's got a missing finger. Don't talk about it to him. In Thailand, it's completely open. There is absolutely no shame in that. It's just a fact of life, mm. and so uh, speaking directly. But even in Thailand, there's a lot of social etiquette. And l u m p u he wasn't known for his social etiquette. That's what I mean. And he would put people in their place. And he was very hard to practice under. That's for sure. Just following his teachings and listening to him on his recordings and reading his teachings and trying to practice them, and knowing from. Knowing him through reading his life and hearing about him and listening to his recordings and reading his words and practicing his practicing his teachings and concluding the truth of what he predicted in those practices, what would happen, and the things that do you, uh, the obstacles you have to overcome, he explains them all in a very simple way that any farmer or simple common common. Uh, Working-class person can understand. He couldn't speak English, and he could. He, in his life, they managed to open 140 branches around the world of his through of the forest tradition through his merits, through the Farang, who came and found him. The first Farang masters like Ajahn Jeff, Ajahn Jeffrey, many, many, and many other masters who came after and. The other great masters, Sumito and c h a y a s a r o and, and so many, so many great masters, and the current abbot of uh, Wat p a n a n a c h a t the the foreign wing of Wat Nong Pa Pong, who is there to this day, receiving foreigners. There are so many great uh, teachers who are Westerners who became monks and ordained and followed the path through through meeting l u n g p u c h a And great teachers who I, I respect, especially Jeffrey de Graff, uh, Ajahn t a n i t a r o Piku, t a n i t a r o Piku, Ajahn Jeffrey, and uh, 
Lungpu was able to without English and the, the, these monks also learned Thai most of them but Lungpu was able to penetrate and open 140 branches around the world and teach foreign monks to become great teachers in their own right to understand those teachings of Ajahn Man uh, Ajahn Sao, Ajahn Man, Lungpu Cha the great forest tradition masters the Tudong Gamatan masters the, who practice the, the real Makkah, the real Praarya Mak, the path to our handship, mm, which arose from the original forming of the Tamayud lineage by King Mongkut, mm, but which was then just academic, and it was Lumpu Man and Lumpu Sao, Ajahn Sao, Ajahn Man, who then started to take these and put them into applied practice of watching the five aggregates and looking at tilakana looking at the three marks of existence rising and ceasing mm, arising and ceasing within one's own consciousness and to see not self and this was the practice of the forest masters mm, and lumpu cha was the bridge between those great arahants assuming they were which is very possible and to the western world and his teachings brought what seemed very complex into simplicity for me and has done so for so many people and those are just some of the very many many reasons and the simplicity of his teachings why I love Lung Pu Cha uh, there was once a time when he had some Farang monks they were walking through the forest path and there was a big tree fallen down blocking the path and Luang Pu asked the foreign monk to help him lift it and move it to the side to clear the way and when they were lifting it it was very heavy and Luang Pu just stopped held, holding it there looking at the foreign monk the Farang and when the farang started to make some wincing and starting to make signs of it was getting heavy he said ah, is it heavy to carry and the foreign monk said yes Ajahn and then so he, they threw it off to the side of the path and when they put it down and stood up again and let go of it he then asked the foreign monk again and now now that you have let it go is it heavy now and the foreign monk understood instantly and said, No, Ajahn, now I've let it go. It isn't heavy at all. Well, I'm not sure what he said really, but that's how I like to tell the story. The essence of the story is true. And so this was an example of the simplicity of his teachings. Another one was when there was one time they were having the practice, the evening prayers practice, and they listened to some Dhamma talk on a tape. And one of the foreign monks went over at the end of the session to switch off the tape player uh, and uh, in the prayer in the shrine room. And he got an electric shock and he just threw it down really fast. Of course, in shock. And Luang Pu exclaimed in delight, Ha! How strange. The things I'm trying to teach you to let go and you have learned their danger so much from the teachings but you still don't let them go but when you grab hold of that and it shocks you in your hand you let go of it straight away why can you let go of that so easily but you still hold on to the other sufferings you hold inside and that is another perfect example of how he used real life situations and simple words to explain some of the deepest realizations in the Dhamma which a practitioner can realize. And that's why, among many, many reasons, why I love Luang Pu. Sir Jan Spencer, having fun with this podcast, hoping you enjoyed this for the Buddha Magic Project and with great love and respect to Lung Pucha Sopato Wat Nong Papung signing off.